The important thing for your double lunch is that you've got your runners on. <laughs> Make sure you got your runners on. And then the beginning set up inside rein straight to the bit and back to the girth so it's not running through the top ring in the beginning for the rookies so you keep control if they get a little bit nervous of the lunges sliding over their back and then the outside rein is through the top ring to the bit and then the same level ring as on the girth so Claire's on the second one here now and it's also important before the double lunge that you Quite often horses, when they get out in the circle, they just want to trot off. So it's important, just as it is for the riding, that they're also walking first and able to warm up a little bit in the walk before they get going. So and then when you change rain, then you're just putting the inside rein through the top loop and the outside rein out of the top loop. So then you don't have to do undo any of your clips, just putting the tail through. Yeah, and then you walk around the back of him with the two ropes. So the two reins then pass over the rump. So on the horses that are a bit nervous, this is the first time you're teaching them just quietly to pass the rein from one side to the other. And then just in the... So this is the, where you'll end up with the two reins through the loop. But in the beginning, in the warming up, then we just take the inside rein out of the top loop here. And then you're ready to go on the new side. And just in the beginning, establishing that even connection on both reins. Yeah, that he can just go directly forward into the rain and that he doesn't, the rain's not taking him into the frame but he's pushing forward into the connection and then the forwardness of his body of the hind leg is creating the connection in the frame in front. So the frame is determined by how much he pushes forward into the rain and not determined by how much the hand is taking back. So you slowly introduce the outside rein. Yeah, and then in the beginning, the first time, touches on his tail. Keep a little bit inside rein. Sometimes they get a little bit nervous at that moment. And then you try to go as far behind him as possible. Keep the connection, a little bit bending to the right. Good, and then he gets really steady in the frame on the vertical. We make the transition to having both uh, rings, so they clip down where it was. Yeah, and then the tail of the inside rein also through the loop at the top, so then you're having him both reins through the driving ring at the top. And in the beginning, just with him standing still here, then you just go behind him and just walk from the left side to the right side. So in the end, he will change from left rein to right rein, and the reins will pass over his back. But in the beginning, just have it that you can have him standing still and the reins pass over his back, so you have a little breakdown, so he knows that this is the feeling he'll get. Rein goes over touches the tail, and then you're on this side, and then back again. Good. Yeah, and one more time, and then a little bit the left rein, and then ask him forward, 
And then you just go out onto the circle again. Good. So then the only difficulty then from this part is then being able to have of course the even pressure on both reins, the connections even on both reins. And then the only time you'll get into trouble is if when the reins pass over his back that they're too sharp on it or they get afraid from the touch and they sort of run fast and want to spin around. So the preparation before you get to this bit is important that you can go straight, be directly behind him. And now when you start to go on the circle and then go in a straight line, he's also relaxed. Good. So then it gets more and more like riding. Both reins are coming directly from the driving position at the top. And the reins, the connection has to stay as smooth as possible and as consistent as possible. Good. And then when you have a good feeling, you can take him a little bit to the outside, a little bit to the inside, and you can start to go straight again. Yeah, and then directly behind him. Yeah, and go more behind him. Good. And now a little bit in trot. when you can be directly behind him and let him feel the reins on his tail. Good. Yeah, and then when he's super relaxed like that, then you know he's ready to change rein. So then you go on the diagonal. So a little bit left rein like you want to circle. And now follow him on his left side. Yeah, it's okay, and now right rein. Good. Yeah, it's good. And now again in trot. Good. And then on the circle first this way. Just a little bit inside rain and then you're able to stand still. It's also a good way to rest. When you're getting out of breath on the long side, you can circle off. <laughs> good. And then you go straight again. And so when you want to go straight, then you have the outside rein a little bit when you're on the short side. Good. So if you're thinking about going straight from your circle, go one circle first, and then when you get in line with the clock, now you start to take the outside rein. Then you get this smooth transition there, straight. Good. Very good. Good boy, Joey. The real art of it is being able to coordinate running and your hand being independent. Yeah. That you really feel that you've got that feel of where he is on the connection and you can release a bit and take a bit independent to your running. Just like in your riding. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Of course, when he's super confident in your controls, then we can start to put the umbrellas out and going over the plastic and under the streamers, and someone standing on the wall waving a flag, all these things. Oh, now you're getting fancy. It's <laughs> doing serpentines. <laughs> So just thinking about that natural progression all the time, that step by step. Good. This is good. Boy, not bad for a rookie first timer. Keep on running. <laughs>